What's up, guys? Dieter Melhorn out on the water doing a little catfish research. But before we can do any research, we got to get some baits in the water and some catfish in the boat. All right, guys, out here doing some trolling. Middle of the summer, man. It's hot. Gonna get hotter. Uh, we got a little bit of clouds, not a lot. Gonna try dragging, finding some fish. Haven't been out here in two weeks, so we're gonna do some looking, see what we can do to find some fish. Since I haven't been out here, I don't have any bait, so. <laughs> Got me old chicken. It's a good go to the store and have bait bait. So I haven't even cut this up yet. Big old, big old, big old breast right there. It'll be enough fish all day. Cut up a few pieces here. Small chunks, guys. Small chunks. There's no need to use big, massive pieces. These fish will hit the small stuff just fine. Boom, boom. Boom, get them all cut up that way. Good for the rest of the day. Look at there, I got a bait, go, bait rod going off. I dropped this in the water right when I got here. Put some uh, red worms on a little double hook rig. So let's see if I can catch me some perch. A little extra bait, look at there. Woo -hoo. We got some volunteers all ready. It's a good thing. What I'm doing this year is basically weighing and measuring the catfish that I catch on my trips. Keeping track of how long the trip is, fish we catch, the length, and the weight. I've done this in the past, did it for several years. Haven't been able to do it the past couple of years. This information goes to the biologist in North Carolina at the Wildlife Resources Commission. They've compiled it, they've used it in research papers, and it's given them a baseline to keep track of what's going on on this lake with the catfish. You hadn't seen them yet. Ancient Mariner Reels, it's what I'm running on the boat. New pinky on the boat. Actually, that's the purple one. No, that's the pink one. Colors are close. There's the difference. That one's more purple. All right, let's get the chicken out first. Here, everything's on a Santee rig. Got plenty of videos on those, drifting rigs, whatever you want to call them. A little smaller hook. That baited up there, bada bing. This one's straight out the back. I do keep my lines out behind the boat a pretty good ways. Part of that is to help with some tangles, get it away from the boat. I think it helps the hook set up. There's a lot of reasons I do it. You do it the way you want to do it. This is how I do it. Boards on, B-cat boards are hard to beat. At least from my way of fishing, they work great. All right, folks, we got the baits in the water. Perch out on the uh, port side, and we've got the chicken out on the starboard side. So making a drag through here, picked off another perch or two there on the rod, trying to put some in the tank. So I've got them, uh, and we can use them for bait just to see which bait they're hitting. Uh, Might have had a bite actually over here on that outside planter board. There may be a small fish on it. I'm gonna check it here in a second. It kind of hit and fluttered and didn't really load up. There goes that one. That one's actually getting bit to the inside one, both on the chicken side. So we'll give it a second see if these fish hook up and pull over there maybe uh bring them in check them out see if there's anything on them but for now we're gonna pull this area i'm just prospecting but uh just covering some water see if i can find some fish just for giggles i'm gonna check this outside planer just to see if there's a small fish it's pulling in weird there could be a small fish on it again 30 pound andy monofilament line a little bit bigger then probably what I need, you guys can get by with 20 without a problem. 50 pound leaders on this stuff, so plenty big leaders. Off of there, B-cat planter boards. Ancient Mariner reels, these are there, what do they call these, a 5,000, 6,000 series. Power handles and a big cat fever. Medium light trolling rod. Soft tip on it, there is a fish on here unless I've gotten into that other line. Don't see the board moving yet. I think it's a small one. See if we can get him here. One of the things we're doing is tracking the size on some of these fish for the biologists. Ongoing project going on all year long. Oh yeah, a good small sample specimen. Simmer, simmer, simmer. Small channel cat. He's hooked solid as a rock though. There we go. Get off of there. Got him. It's a fish. Skunk's out of the boat. Chicken's winning. That's gonna be 14 and a half. What I do on these things, guys, is I get a measurement and a weight, and they chronicle this data over a long, long period of time, an entire year. We get some good numbers, some good averages on what's going on with the fish. 0 0.97, 0 0.97. Good news is it goes back alive. Now, one of the reasons uh, the biologist partnered with me on doing this is because of, well, the range of fish that I catch. I'm not targeting big fish on my fishing trips. On the opposite end, I'm not targeting small fish. I'm just fishing. It's kind of a good range of what is going on with the fishery and the size fish. Listen, 
all sample methods have a bias to them. Mine does have a bias. Uh, with that said, I'm not somebody that's just out going and catching big fish. This isn't a bragging board to where we're just going to show them all the big fish we catch. Because quite honestly, nothing could be worse than in one of these surveys to show them nothing but big fish. Because what does that tell the biologist? It tells them, hey, this fishery's great. It's got trophy fish. We don't need to do a thing. So same thing if you have nothing but small fish. It could tell you, can give you some false information that, oh, it's nothing but little bitty fish in here. There's stunted rate growth. We may need to ramp up the harvest, blah, blah 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 there's all kinds of ways you can go the bottom line is you got to give them honest numbers honest answers that is the best way to get an honest fair analysis of what's going on in the fishery all right guys got one going on pinky planter board boom that one is on perch and that's a good hit on that planter board too a very nice hit we'll take that we'll take that work this out of the way it's a lot easier to do this on guide trips moving stuff around Good fish. Happy to have a good one. There we go. Get the board off. Like I said, you could pop this board loose if you wanted to. I choose to pull them off. One of the reasons I'm able to do it. It's one of the great things about these flexible trolling rods is that tip. Very flexible. And it's very easy to keep a little bit of pressure on that line while you're messing with it. That one of the things I like about it. Not to mention, when you're into small fish, it makes them a little more fun to catch. I don't think he's a giant, but I think he's bigger than the last two. He hit it like he was a lot bigger, didn't he? Yes, sir. <laughs> he came on a demon dragon. Playing around the demon dragons. I'm gonna have some more stuff out on these things these fall. These are actually not a demon dragon. This is a trophy cat tackle rattle i'll have some stuff out on some demon dragons later yeah nice little blue good eater size man if i was keeping them to eat that would be the one to keep get a measurement get it released uh, 22 inches 4.16 shook he going not on fire we had another rod go though uh, i'm gonna check this one perch rod it looked like it may have got hit about the same time as this fish i'm gonna check it just to see if there's anything on it but uh it's two fish fairly quickly no size to them but we're actually getting bit uh if that catch rate keeps keeps up we'll catch a lot of fish today he may be on there he is oh i was just letting line go out on this reel i'm actually gonna let some more go out to get that bird's nest out of it just repositioning boards I was letting line go out on this planter so it could get out and all of a sudden I heard this noise in the water and I thought it may have been perch on top of the water. Turns out it was this planter board skating across the top of the water. I thought, I figured the fish probably pulled off of it without any resistance to set the hook, but like he came back to hit it. So we got him hooked. Things is bigger than a channel cat anyway. Not sure if it's a giant fish, but i tell you what, if that board would have been, if the reel would have been in gear, I would have said it's a giant fish, but the fact that it was just scooting across, probably not. We'll see. I don't think this fish totally knows he's hooked, to be perfectly honest. To be honest with you, he's... There he is on top. It's a good fish. Let's see if I can get him to go back down. I do not like fish on top of the water for several reasons. One, they get that head up out of the water. It gives them a lot more they have a lot more power and energy out of the water because being in the water adds buoyancy that helps reduce some of that energy that they have when they're out of the water heads out of the water they decide to thrash it's easy to tear a hook and throw a hook there we go it's a good fish that's a nice one there again on chicken circle hook perfectly placed in the corner of the mouth good looking fish Good one. I said not a monster, but we'll take that all day long. Good research fish. Getting a good sampling of everything across the board today. 27 and a half, 10 pounds. Boom. Good fish. Seven. 27, 10 pounds. Bag of life. Boom, there's another one. That's a bigger fish in the boat. Another one on chicken. An older fish. How do we know that fish is older? Well, obviously you'd say because it's bigger and to a certain extent you're correct. But uh, you know, the truth is the only way to know an age of a fish accurately is to kill it. 
uh, you have to kill it. Extract a bone, basically, for lack of a better term, an ear bone, an odalith. And uh, it basically has, uh, like, the rings of a tree, annuli, little rings that you're able to determine how old the fish is. In quality research, you have to kill some fish to get these numbers. Uh, it's all part of, you know, research that hopefully you have in place wherever you're fishing. Luckily, in the Carolinas, we've got it going on. So, honestly, most biologists are open to it. Uh, if you reach out to them and uh, see what you can do to help, a lot of times they'll be receptive and uh, you can get on board like uh, I am here with, uh, you know, trying to get some data that will hopefully uh, make the fish in your fishery sustainable. I think there may be one on this. Guess what? Perch bait. I made a pull over here to some deep water. See if there's anything in it. I had the rod bump a couple of times. It really haven't got bit through here. First bite, right on the edge of the channel. About 35 feet of water. This is a better fish. This is probably going to be one of the bigger fish of the day. Guess what? We're happy to have that. Perch fillet. Go back down. This fish is coming to the top. Like that last one. Get back down, get back down, get back down. Take a dive, take a dive. I'd love to know why fish do that. Take a dive. Take a dive. Now right, we can work him back to the boat. In all honesty, guys, not a bad day of fishing. This is fish number six. Got that last one we got hooked up on that uh, pulled off there near the boat. Hadn't been out here a long time today. Pretty good catching. Pretty good catch rate, especially middle of the day, guys. It is 12.30. So, middle of the day out here, doing something different. That's a good one. I like this fish. Oh, he's going back down. He didn't like being on camera. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, this is recipe for disaster right here. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. Oh, it missed. Got it. Ah. Let's get a length and a weight on him. Give me eight and a half. See what he weighs here. I got 12 pounds. Nice 12 pound fish. There we go. Good one. Good one, good one. Get him back alive. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're gonna like. I'd watch that one, and then that one. No, no do, do that one first, and then that one. I, I don't know, just watch them both, they're both good.